What if I told you the highest humidity level ever recorded on Earth only registered a relative humidity of 68%, and it was recorded in a place that gets less rain per year than Phoenix, Arizona? I realize how ridiculous both of those facts sound, but I swear they're both completely true. When you think of humidity, you probably think of that percentage you see next to the temperature on your weather app. That's called relative humidity. It's the amount of water in the air divided by the amount of water that air can hold. A relative humidity value of 0% means the air is completely dry, and a value of 100% means the air is completely humid. Seems simple enough, so what's the catch? As it turns out, relative humidity is actually a pretty bad measure of how humid it feels outside, for one big reason. Hot air can hold more water than cold air. This is why 90 degrees Fahrenheit with a 50% relative humidity feels a whole lot stickier than 70 degrees in 50% humidity. Enter dew point. Dew point is defined as the temperature which the air would need to cool to to become fully saturated with water, aka the point at which dew forms. Get it? Dew point? If that sounds overly complicated, just know this. Dew point measures, in a way, the absolute quantity of water in the air, not the quantity relative to a theoretical maximum like does relative humidity. This means that dew point is a much better indicator of how humid it feels to the human body than relative humidity is. A dew point in the 50s is generally considered pretty comfortable. Once you get into the 60s, however, the humidity really starts to set in. Once you get into the 70s, it starts feeling tropical. A dew point of 60 would be a typical summer day for Minneapolis. 65, summer day in Philadelphia. 70, Austin, Texas. 75, Mumbai during monsoon season. So what's the highest dew point ever recorded then? Is it 80 degrees? Is it 90 degrees? On July 8th, 2003, Dharan, Saudi Arabia recorded a dew point of 95 degrees Fahrenheit. With an air temperature of 108 degrees, the heat index in Dharan that day reached an absolutely hellish 178 degrees. But because of hot air holding more water than cold air, the relative humidity was only 68%. Now wait, you're probably thinking, isn't Saudi Arabia a desert? Yes. Dharan gets an average of only 4 inches of rain per year, so how can such a dry, rainless place get so humid? Well, I'm glad you asked. It's actually pretty simple, the Persian Gulf. The Persian Gulf is a shallow body of water surrounded on three sides by hot desert, Extreme heat means huge amounts of water evaporate into the air, causing the coastal region of the Persian Gulf, where Dharan is, to see the highest dew points on Earth in the summer, despite the whole region technically being a desert. Fun fact, this means that the famous desert cities of Dubai, Doha, Abu Dhabi, and Manama are all unbearably humid in the summer, on top of being scorching hot. So in case you're wondering why they moved the Qatar World Cup to winter, that's why. It's hard to comprehend just how miserable this combination of heat and humidity really is. There were not many first-hand accounts I could find, but I did manage to find a quote from a former Dharan resident who described the humidity there as follows, quote, You walk outside and it immediately felt like someone pressed a hot, wet towel, like you sometimes get on airplanes, over your entire head. I wear glasses and they'd immediately fog up. You sweat instantly. People just avoid being outside in any way they can. In the summers, my friends and I would become nocturnal as a way to beat the heat. We lived in a compound for employees of the Saudi National Oil Company, and they treated air conditioning repair like ambulances or fire trucks. They had crews on 24-hour call, and you could have them dispatched at a moment's notice by calling the special air conditioning emergency hotline. End quote. If you look at the population of the Gulf states over time, you'll see that the strongest periods of growth do not immediately follow the discovery of oil, but instead the arrival of air conditioning. In the United Arab Emirates, for instance, oil was first drilled in 1958, but air conditioning did not become widely adopted until the late 1960s and 70s. The country's headcount roughly doubled between 1960 and 1970, but nearly quadrupled from 1970 to 1980. Prior to the past 100 years, the population of the Persian Gulf region was largely nomadic. Settling down in one place was simply not possible. It's crazy to think that one of the fastest growing economic centers in the world is located in such a naturally inhospitable place. 
and given global temperature trends, things are only going to get worse. It's anyone's guess as to how Saudi Arabia, Qatar, and the UAE will cope with the impending obsolescence of oil. They've already diversified their economies plenty, so they'll probably be fine. Well, so long as their AC doesn't stop working.